Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about the linear smooth value class. So commonly when people are building plugins and they're moving their parameters really quick, uh, one thing that people say is that sometimes they can hear clicking or popping when they move the slider very quickly. And one way that you could do uh, smoothing with these values is using the linear smooth value class, which allows you to interpolate from an old value to a new value at a slower rate rather than making the change instant. Now that sounds a little bit complicated, but I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. Before we get started, just wanted to let you know about our audio programming community on Discord. You can join us on the audioprogrammer.com forward slash community. It's a great way to get to know other audio programmers of all levels and all backgrounds. So we hope that you can join us, theaudioprogrammer.com forward slash community. And also if you find this tutorial helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. So let's go ahead and get started. And we can start out by looking at the Juice API. And um, one thing that I'll say is for this particular class, this could be a little bit confusing. And I can show you an, actu uh, an easier way to actually use this. So uh, down here, there's actually an example of how you can actually instantiate a linear smooth value object. And we see that here where it says uh, smooth value, and then you have to give it a type, which uh, in this case is the type float and the type of smoothing type. So you have a couple different options here. One is linear, and then there's another one that's multiplicative. Uh, but I'll show you, I'll actually show you an easier way that you could do this. So I've set up a very simple project here. So this is a simple plugin and I have it in standalone mode at the moment. And it's just, I have one parameter, it's called gain, and it just goes from zero to one. And we can take a look at the console window here and we can see that the value is zero. And anytime that I change it, it instantly changes to the value that it needs to be. So. Uh, so there's no, there's practically no delay in the time between when I give it a new value and when you see that value show up in the console. Okay. So one of the problems that can happen when you're dealing with some plugins is that when you change the value too quickly, you can get little pops and clicks. And there are a couple of reasons why popping and clicking can actually occur. But one of those reasons is because uh, it's trying to go from an old value to a new value instantly. And that uh, that's producing zero, what they call zero point crossings, uh, where you're in the middle of a wave, and then all of a sudden you have to update. And what happens is that that update produces a click. Uh, and it's not a smooth waveform. So this linear smooth value class actually helps you to interpolate uh, a little bit slower between those two values. So the way that we do this is we can instantiate this object and the documentation doesn't, as far as I've seen, doesn't really reflect this, but the way that you would instantiate this is by saying juice linear smooth value. And then you have to give it a type name in this, and this type name is float. And I'll just call this, I'll call this gain and I'm going to initialize it with a value of zero. So if you compare the way that I've instantiated this here, you see that we have this linear smooth value and then just give it the type name and then the name of the object. Whereas the documentation here has a slightly more verbose uh, syntax. I prefer this syntax. I don't see it reflected anywhere in the documentation, but that's how I like to do it. Next thing that we need to do is that we need to go to our prepare to play and we actually need to give this object the sample rate. Okay, so as many of you know, prepare to play is a function that's called whenever your whenever your doll changes sample rates or when you've stopped and you get ready to play audio again, it calls prepare to play before it plays the audio just in case the sample rate or the buffer size has changed. So here we have a function call in our API called reset where we give it the sample rate and what we call the ramp length in seconds. So this is how much time that we want to uh, take to interpolate from the old value to the new value. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So here we will call gain, which is the name of our, uh, our linear smooth value object. And then we will call reset. And in here, we will just pass in the sample rate. And 
Then length, ramp length in seconds. This is a little bit, I find that this is a little bit misleading, but for now I'm going to put 0.05 and you'll see what I mean. You'll see what the result of this is here once we've done that. So next thing that we need to do is in our process block, what we're doing is we are getting, so, so I've set up a audio processor value tree state where we have a, one parameter, which is our gain. And that's, that's all, I, all I'm doing is I'm just taking that gain parameter and I'm consoling that out. So uh, if you're not sure about the audio processor value tree state class or what that's used for, you may want to check the tutorial. I'll link that up in the corner. Uh, so what we're doing is we're just currently consoling out the gain. Uh, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to put this into this gain parameter into our linear smooth value gain. So what I'm going to do, because the name of our linear smooth value object is called gain, and because I've called this gain, I'm going to change this to G because we don't want our compiler to get confused there. So what I could do is I can call gain, which is the name of our linear smooth value object. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set call a function called set target value. And what this is going to do is that this is going to set the destination that we're trying to get to, right? So that is going to be uh, our G. So when the user has moved this, uh, this parameter, so I'm just going to comment. I'm going to comment this out for a moment. I'm just going to build and just to explain what we're doing here. So what we've done is we have the parameter that we've called uh, gain, and then we've wrapped it. We've set the new target value to uh, this uh, to whatever the user moves it to, right? So if I move it to 0.75, then the new target is 0.75. If I move it to 0 0.07, that's the new target, right? Now, what we want to do is we want there to be a little bit of time before we get to that new target. Uh, and then, uh, so what we want to do is if we have this wrapped in some sort of uh, DSP algorithm, then to get the target as to, to get the, the, va the next value as it's calculating, we want to call uh, gain get next, uh, get next value. Okay, so that's going to give us the value that the next value as it's interpolating towards its target. And you'll see what I mean here uh, very shortly. So now we have our gain and I'm going to just turn this up and you're going to see that it's going to take a little time to get to our destination. So there I've let go of the mouse. And we see it's going up, 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 and it's going to keep going until we get to 0.58. And see, it's taking a very long time, right? So we might not want it to take such a long time to get to this value. And we will just wait. And we'll see that once it gets to 0.58, that it'll just, it'll just stop because that's the target value. There we go. So that interpolation was a little bit slow, right? We might want that to, to happen a little bit quicker. And the way that we the way that we do that, let's just add a zero to this, right? So so it's 0 0.005 rather than 0 0.05, and we will recompile, and let's see what the result of that is. Here we go. So now I am now I've got this gain, and I've moved it to a new value, and we see that that change is happening a lot quicker, right? Because uh, what I've done is I've increased the time that it takes to, to get from um, the, the ramp time that it gets that it takes to get from one value to the next. So there we go. And we see that that is what? Uh, is that five seconds? Not quite five seconds, maybe half of five seconds, 2.5 seconds. Uh, so there we go. And I will do this again just to show you. So let's make it point three zeros and a five. And we will see that it will be probably nearly instant. Okay, not quite instant. So there we go. And we see that this is pretty, pretty quick now, right? So not instant. So if I just stop and we go back to the console, 
and just scroll up. So we can see how it how quickly it interpolates from one to zero there. Uh, so that's I can't that I would say that's roughly what fifteen values. So there you go. So that is essentially the essence of the linear smooth value class. Okay, so it's just a way where you can actually slow down the rate of change when your when your user is changing parameters to make sure that you're not getting any popping and clicking. And there are some other ways that you can do this uh, as well that are, that are inside Juice, but I find this to be one of the most simple ones. So if you found that helpful, uh, be sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.